10.52. So after that story, um, Moab revolts. Is it a coincidence that Moab is also the mother of all bombs? Is that just a coincidence that how that worked out? Anyway, Joram, J-O-R-A-M, let's see, Hebrew, Jeroniam, Jeroniam, J-E-H-O-R-A-M, a variant Joram, also in verse 6. Oh wait, this is going to be 2 Kings, chapter 3, the entire thing. Son of Ahab, became king of Israel in Samaria. In the eighteenth year of his, in the eighteenth year of Joseph, king of Judah, and he reigned twelve years. That's not that long. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father and his mother had done. Hmm. Got rid of the sacred stones of Baal that his father had made. Huh. So Israel's kings did remove, or at least one of them, did remove some idols. Hmm, so it wasn't always Judah's kings. There's another thing wrong in that, from that video. <sighs> wow, I'm just finding errors by just simply reading through the Bible. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Mm, and nothing against the guy, it's just interesting. That's no reason I'm not calling him out because people would get mad at him and yell at him. Oh no, he made a few mistakes. Oh well. Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, N E B A T, which he had caused Israel to commit. He did not turn away from them. Now, Massa, M A, no, M E S A, no, M E S H A, Misa, King of Moab, raised sheep. And he had to pay the King of Israel a tribute of a hundred thousand lambs, wow, and the wool of a hundred thousand rams, wow. But after Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So all that time, King Jerom set out from Samaria and mobilized all Israel. He also sent his, this message to Joseph, king of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go up with me to fight against Moab? <coughs> I will go with you, he replied. I am as you are, my people as your people, my house as your house. <coughs> hmm. By what route shall we attack, he asked. Oh, Judah and Israel are getting along. See, the two can get along, too. They don't always have to be fighting. There's another thing. But yeah, by what route shall we attack? Yeah, through the desert desert of Edom, he answered. Hmm. So the king of Israel sent out, no, set out with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. Like, hey, let's get the king of Edom on this too. And the prophet like, yeah, okay, yeah, third person will, will only help more, I guess. Sure, why not? <laughs> After a roundabout match of seven days. The army had no more water for themselves or for the animals with them. Okay. Actually, but again, yeah, why go through the desert? Of, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a more direct path, however. What? Exclaimed the king of Israel, has the Lord called us three 
kings together only to deliver us into the hands of Moab? But Joseph asks, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that through whom we may inquire of the Lord? Mmm, I guess, yeah. Like, why are we wandering around in the desert? Please. <laughs> An officer of the king of Israel answered, Elijah, the son of Shaphat, S-H-A-P-H-A-T, is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. Who oh, does a B? That is, he was Elijah's personal servant. Ooh. Joseph had said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Joseph, the king of Edom, so, so the king of Israel and Joseph and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, Why do you want to involve me? Go to the prophets of your father and your no, and the prophets of your mother. No, the king of Israel replied, because it was the Lord who called us three kings together to deliver us into the hands of Moab. Elisha said, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if I do not have respect for the presence of Joseph, the king of Judah, no, if I didn't, if I did not have respect for the presence of Joseph, the king of Judah, I would not pay any attention to you. But now bring me a harpist. <coughs> okay. I He's going, tell him in song. While the harpist was praying... I think I pronounced that right. Oh well. The hand of the Lord came to Elisha, and he said, This is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water, for this is what the Lord says. Wait. But that's all rain of... Anyway. You will see neither wind nor rain, Yet this valley will be filled with water, and you, and you, you, and you, your cattle, and your other animals will drink. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. Well, yes, you created sun, you created stars, galaxies, atoms, elements, making water appear out of nowhere. Yeah, that, that, that's actually pretty easy. He will also deliver Moab into your hands. You will overthrow every fortified city and every, every major town. You will cut down every good tree and stop all the springs and ruin, ruin every good field with stones. Wow. Now will you win? You will utterly demolish them and make sure they can. Uh, they're going to have a very hard time coming back. The next morning, about that, about the time, uh, for the you no know, for offering the sacrifice, there it was water flowing from the direction of Edom. There's an exclamation mark in there. Wow, whoever wrote this was really excited. Not even a quote, it's just in the actual text. Huh? In the commentary. Interesting. I don't know if YouTube can pick up exclamation marks, periods, and question marks. Actually, I can probably can tell it's that. If your voice is actually in question. Hmm. I never really thought about that. I'm subtitled, I mean. And the land was filled with water. Now all the Moabites had heard that the kings had come to fight against them. So every man, young and old, who could bear arms, was called up and stationed on the border. When they got up early in the morning, the sun was shining on the water 
to the Moabites across the way, the water looked red, like blood. Ooh. What? I guess you can do position in a way. Some rises can look red. <laughs> that is blood, they said. Those kings must have fought and slaughtered each other. Now to the plunder, Moab. Um. I think even if they did, I don't know if it would be that much blood to fill an entire valley enough to, um, be seen glistening in the morning sun. I want someone to do the math on that. Morbid math, I know, but one... How much blood will it take to pool big enough to be seen from a good, probably a good distance away, glistening like a pond or something in the sunlight in the morning? Anyway, but when the Moabites came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and fought against, no, the Israelites rose up and fought them until they fled. And the Israelites invaded the land and slaughtered the Moabites. They destroyed the towns and each man threw a stone on every good field until it was covered. They stopped all the springs and cut down every good tree. Only Kerasith? K-I-R-H-A-R-E-S-E-T-H was left with its stones in place, but men armed with slings surrounded it and attacked it. <coughs> also, Israel seems to be winning a lot of wars it goes into. Seems like if Judah wanted to portray Israel as a bad nation when Israel gets bucked, kicked every single turn. But that's not how it works. And why is Judah helping Israel? Why didn't Judah be, no, you wicked, you know? No. Less evidence of that stupid idea that this was all a myth made by Judah to make themselves look better. Anyway, when the king of Moab saw that the battle had gone against him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through the king of Edom, but they failed. Then he took his firstborn son, who was to succeed him as king, and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. This guy takes as his son. We don't know how old his son is. He may be fully grown. Adult. He may be a teenage boy. He may be a little kid. He may have just been a baby. And he just sacrifices him on the wall. The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. <sighs> yep, this is... Yeah, the people back then were kind of messed yeah. up. Levinos.